I captured a whole bunch of Fox and Forest's gameplay when it first came out and realised I didn't actually do a Jim Impressions for it, or really anything with the footage at all, so hello, I'm Jim. How are you today? Me? I am fine. This is Fox and Forests. It's a game. It was on Kickstarter. It was a good looking Kickstarter game. I did a video on it when it was first on Kickstarter. I kickstarted it myself. It's an action platformer and it's... It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. That was a weird thing to say on reflection. I kickstarted it myself. Lots of people contributed to the Kickstarter. I don't mean to imply I was the only one and I donated all of the money. I mean, I contributed along with a whole bunch of other people. Anyway, the game is... Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's a fairly straightforward action platformer. You're a fox walking around on two legs like it's okay. You hit enemies with a crossbow, you collect things. Every now and then you'll fight a boss, of course. And as you can see, it's all wrapped up with these lovely 16-bitty visuals. The old retro graphics thing is always on vogue, so we can hardly be surprised so many indie games go for it. A lot of them do the 8-bit shit, but I prefer the 16-bit stuff because you can be both conservative with the amount of horsepower and therefore resources you need to put into the visuals, but there's just enough for you to make some detailed and really quite beautiful imagery. And Fox and Forests looks pretty good, and the enemy designs are cool, and the environments are nice. And there is one really cool idea, even if it's not the freshest idea on the menu, the season-changing mechanic. You know, turn it from a nice, uh, a lush, summery vista into a cold winter wonderland, which is key to solving several environmental puzzles. For example, there might be some trees without any leaves, but if you change the season to where the leaves are there, you can use them as platforms to jump up to stuff. That's a fairly simple example. You can freeze water by going into winter, stuff like that. It's well implemented and integrated into the platforming action, and it's one of the higher points of the game. Unfortunately, Fox and Forest is also just annoying. Just a real pain in the ass. Enemy placement is such that enemies aren't exactly difficult to overcome, they're just in the way. Many of them seem placed just for the purpose of cheap shots, put in places to score a quick hit on the player when they're trying to jump from platform to platform in a way that just messes with the flow of the level. Obviously enemies are there to hit you, that's the point of them, but there's a difference between seeing an enemy and tactically working out how to hit it without taking damage and seeing an enemy and just thinking, why is it there? That's right in the middle of my fucking jump. All of this is compounded by the fact that several abilities seemingly designed to mitigate a level of the frustration have to be unlocked as upgrades. Something like the double jump attack is so fundamentally useful that it should be fundamentally there. It boggles the mind that you have to actually go unlock that shit. All that said, there are some fun upgrades that you can get, and once you start buying stuff and making Rick the Fox a little bit more battle ready, Ready. Fox and Forest become slightly less annoying. Still annoying, but a bit less. Another department that could use some work are those aforementioned boss fights. They just go on too long. The HP on them is ridiculous. They're fairly straightforward puzzle bosses. You work out the way to deal damage to them and then just do it. But some of them require you to do the pattern so many bloody times that by the end of it, you're bored. Again, it's one of those things that just makes me wonder why it was designed the way it was designed. Because once again, it's not a challenge, it's not tough, it's just exasperating. And it makes me wonder if that was something retroactively added, like perhaps the developers thought that Fox and Forests wasn't challenging enough, and so the answer was to just whack some enemies in in inconvenient places and bump up the boss HP. It just feels like a, an artificial attempt to make Fox and Forests harder than it actually is. And maybe it's just me, but I'd rather have a well-designed piss-easy game than a frustratingly designed tough one. Not that Fox and Forest is really any of that, it's just somewhere in the middle, being quite satisfying at some points, and a kick up the rectum at others. Also, to really avoid annoyance, don't pay too much attention to the dialogue. There is a story, and it plays out between levels, but the puns and the witticisms are... Ugh. 
Unfortunately, there's not a lot more I can say about Fox and Forest, which might be part of the reason why it took me so long to get around to doing this video. The core of it is good. It's decently made. It's not mind-blowing. It's not a revolution or a revelation, but it can be a good little afternoon's fun. Unfortunately, that fun does come wrapped in so many caveats, so many albeits, that it's hard to recommend for any but people who really, really like the retro Mega Drive slash Genesis style platform stuff. And that's an ever-crowding market that's getting harder and harder to stand out from. The market is ripe enough that you can find many, many worse games than Fox and Forest, but you can also find many better ones too. Fox and Forest hovers somewhere around the middle, not a terrible game, not a truly great masterpiece, but as I said at the top of this, it's alright. Yeah, Fox and Forests, it's alright.